Hello everyone, my name is Tobias Pulis, and this is work done together with Rasmus Stahlberg. We are both at Karlsruhe University, Sweden. I'll be presenting our work on website fingerprinting with website oracles, starting by giving a background to Tor, then introdu introducing uh, website oracles, followed by website fingerprinting with website oracles, then a brief presentation of different sources, and wrapping up with conclusions. To begin with, what is Tor? Well, Tor is both a web browser and a network. In terms of a network, it's a low latency anonymity network consisting of around 7,000 volunteer-run relays or servers around the world. Users, on the other hand, uh, of Tor typically interact through or with this network through a Tor browser, which is a web browser, uh, a fork ba based out of uh, Firefox. You can use Tor browser to browse the web anonymously, to access so-called onion services, uh, and also circumvent censorship. In this presentation, I would like to focus on the use case of browsing the quote-unquote regular web with Tor browser, although our work to a degree also applies to Onion services. When you browse with Tor browser and visit a website like petsimpulsion.org, um, Tor creates a circuit uh, through the Tor network, starting from your Tor browser, um, to try to obfuscate your identity online. Um, these, uh, these three hops, these three relays, uh, have particular roles or selected in an intelligent way, and it's not that important in our case, except knowing that um, the first uh, entry of the circuit is called the guard, and the exit is, well, called the exit, it's the last one, and there are about a thousand exits um, today in the network. We know that Tor browser has around 2 to 8 million daily users, depending on which measurements and how you measure, I guess, uh, but at least million of daily users. Uh, and thanks to a study by Mani et al. in 2018, we know that the websites that are visited by users of Tor browser map very well to the so-called Alexa Top 1 million most popular websites uh, online. So in other words, we know that the users of Tor browser visit basically the same websites as, say, a Chrome user or a Safari user. This detail will matter a lot uh, later. Uh, since Tor is an anonymity network, uh, the literature is filled with a wide range of different attacks on Tor, uh, and of course Tor's design aimed to mitigate a lot of them. Um, one particular uh, type of attack is a website fingerprinting attack, in which a local passive attacker, such as your internet service provider, or your router, or say your network interface card on your computer, looks at the encrypted traffic from your Tor browser, uh, of you as a particular user, as it enters into the Tor network, and based on the patterns in this encrypted traffic, tries to determine which website you're visiting on the, on the web, just based on the in, uh, encrypted patterns. Um, attacks are surprisingly good at this, in particular if you consider deep uh, learning-based attacks. It turns out that recognizing patterns of network traffic, encrypted network traffic, is similar to, say, detecting phases in images. So deep learning is very good at this. Um, we have studied a website fingerprinting attacks in literature for, uh, well, in the bar park 10 years or so, and uh, there are many challenges for an attacker in practice to perform these kind of attacks. Um, too many to, to touch upon here, but for example, imagine if a website fingerprinting attack or a classifier, since it's typically a machine learning classifier, uh, tells an attacker that Alice, this particular user we're, we're monitoring, um, she visited example.com. What does this really mean? In the sense that, can the attacker really trust this classification? Uh, and the answer to this is that it really depends on so many things. Um, among other things, it depends on what's called the base rate. Meaning that how often would actually Al is Al how often is Alice really visiting example.com? Maybe she's simply not interested in this kind of uh, website at all and would never visit it. So that means that any any even the smallest false positive rate, so any false positive from this classifier, uh, in general observed in experiments or as we evaluate it, um, would mean that actually from the attacker's perspective, when the classifier says Alice is Alice visited example.com, it would be useless. It would always be wrong. We've had, uh, we've had these kind of debates in the website fingerprinting community for quite some time, uh, and as uh, luck would not have it, we've had quite a similar debate in society at large the last half a year or so around uh, how effective uh, COVID-19 antibody tests are. What does it mean for an individual, contra what does it mean for the population, for example, right? So we're all familiar with these kind of problems, uh, unfortunately. And a similar debate has been raging for quite some time in the website fingerprinting community. So one of the motivations uh, behind our paper is that we wanted to look at if we could make the situation a bit more clear, clear up this debate a little bit, and, and, and um, uh, as in make it clearly the case that this is not a huge issue for the attacker. And uh, the idea you want to do this is by making the attacker stronger, slightly stronger, by introducing these website oracles. And um, we, we don't want to make the attacker too strong, like a global passive adversary, because then we know that it's outside of the threat model of Tor, um, but it's going to be somewhere in between there. 
And I hope by the end of this presentation, I've convinced you that uh, an attacker that that uh, has access to a website Oracle and tries to do website fingerprinting is more like the website fingerprinting attacker with, I say, a credit card than it is a nation state actor acting as a global passive adversary. Well, let's see. Uh, and this uh, leads us on to website oracles. And a website oracle, uh, just like an encryption oracle or a decryption oracle, for those who are familiar with uh, encryption uh, security notions, is an abstraction. And it's an abstraction of a capability that we believe is reasonable to assume that our attacker ha have somehow, uh, but it's an abstraction. And it's going to be a very powerful one. And then we're going to look at how to realize this abstraction later on in the presentation. So uh, a website oracle is available to a website fingerprinting attacker um, uh, as, as follows in the modified figure that I showed you before, um, where the attacker can ask uh, the website uh, oracle a question and get a yes or no answer back. And the, the question that the website oracle will answer for the attacker is if a particular website was visited by someone at a particular point in time through the Tor network. And I want to emphasize here that we are talking about some time frame. Typically in our paper in the orders of uh, milliseconds, hundreds of milliseconds, but could also be seconds. Uh, and it's for a, for a website, a particular website, but it could be for someone, meaning that it could be anyone from the Tor network visiting this particular website. So one way to look at the, what the website Oracle does is that it, it performs a membership query on the uh, destination anonymity set of all possible websites that are visited at a particular point in time uh, by anyone from Tor. Uh, this kind of abstraction um, it's actually quite easy for us to simulate. We can simulate it. And once again, we're going to be leaning on the Mani et al. Uh, survey I mentioned earlier before, where they performed a, a privacy preserving measurement of real Tor network traffic. First, we learn how websites are distributed, approximately. And uh, and by websites being distributed, I mean how 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 are they visited, and uh, sorry, which websites are visited uh, through the Tor network. And there are two ways to look at this, uh, at the data we get from this, uh, from Mani et al's work that are, that are useful for us today. Uh, and one is to say that, okay, about one third of the traffic goes to Alexa Top 1000, one third goes to the rest of Alexa Top 1 million, and the remaining or last uh, third of website visits go to other websites that are not on Alexa Top 1 million. Another way to look at it is that 40% of the traffic uh, from Tor, uh, or the website visits, I should say, goes to Alexa Top 10,000, and 60% to the rest. Uh, so, okay, we have an idea now how website visits are distributed, thanks to the work of Manyatal. It's a long tail distribution, right? Most people visit the most popular websites on the web, and the rest is just uh, a bit of noise. Uh, we also learn from Manyatal uh, uh, a quite good upper bound, I would argue, of the number of website visits that take place per day through Tor. Uh, and we know this through their measurements of the number of initial streams per circuit. Um, they did a measurement of about 104 million um, website visits per day with a 95% confidence interval. Uh, we take the upper bound of this confidence in interval and assume 140 million websites uh, that are visited through Tor uh, for a full day. Uh, and we assume that this is uniform, perhaps naively. But because we now have the number of website visits um, through Tor and we know how they are distributed, we can make a simulation of the entire uh, recipient website anonymity set I showed you in the previous slide. And that gives us a way to simulate a website oracle, since all it does is query this anonymity set, right? So uh, I'm now going to convince you that having access to such a thing, to such a website oracle, is uh, ridiculously useful for an attacker. And then hopefully I can uh, um, also convince you later on that it's not overkill. It's not too much. So um, in a website fingerprinting attack, an attacker monitors uh, M particular websites in what's called the open world. So maybe it monitors, say, Google or Facebook, for example. And when a victim visits a website, we assume that uh, either the victim will visit the monitor website, so for example, Google or Facebook, or it might also visit an unmonitored website, let's say Pet Symposium. So this gives us the terminology monitored or unmonitored in an open world. Um, in the paper, uh, we define two verifiers that can be used to uh, can be used together with any website fingerprinting attack. And uh, we, we define a binary verifier and a list verifier. The list verifier is just a binary verifier in a loop. Uh, please see the paper for that. But the bin binary verifier is quite simple. <clears throat> so if the website classifier says that a, a monitored website was visited, such as example.com, then we say that when we have access to a website oracle, uh, we only accept that positive classification that a monitored website was visited if when we ask the website oracle, they confirm that this monitored website was visited. If the website oracle doesn't confirm it for us, uh, then we will classify it as un un unmonitored, even though the website fingerprinting classifier said it was monitored. Clearly here, 
uh, website popularity of the monitor websites is very important. Because as I mentioned, let's say you want to monitor access to, say, google.com or facebook.com. Most of the time, there's going to be somebody to the Tor Network visiting these websites because they are so popular. So the website Oracle will always confirm gladly a classification for google.com or facebook.com. So in this case, the website Oracle is useless because it will, only, it will always say yes, 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 yes to the question of these popular monitor websites being visited. So in this case, a website Oracle is, you might as well not have one. It's useless. It's just a function that returns true for you all the time. But when you visit less popular websites that are less frequently visited to Tor, then there will be cases when the website Oracle uh, rules out what would have been a false positive from the classifier. And this is uh, when the website Oracle shines. So we are going to be altering the popularity of the monitor websites in our experiments now. I'm going to show you uh, nine graphs now, quite uh, rapidly, but they all look identical. We just change uh, one thing mainly. Uh, on the left-hand side, let's focus on that one. We see a precision recall graph, uh, as is typical. You see one line uh, for DF. This is for deep fingerprinting. It's a state-of-the-art deep learning-based website fingerprinting attack. And then we have five more lines, ranging from one to 10,000. And, and these five lines represent using deep fingerprinting with a website oracle, where you are monitoring websites that are at the Alexa popularity rank one, 10, 100, 1,000, or 10,000. As we can see on the left-hand side here, um, website Oracle access makes precision of, that, of the classifier very, very good. It also slightly improves uh, recall. Um, when we move on in this new setting, where we give the attacker access to a website Oracle, we also see that against uh, the defense walkie-talkie, um, we can improve the precision dramatically. Similarly, we can see for WTF pad, uh, a huge increase in precision as well, and a slight recall uh, increase as well. Moving on to constant rate uh, defenses with significantly more overhead, um, we see similar things here. So for CS Buffalo and Tamara, we see a, a huge increase, increase in precision, but we can only ever so slightly uh, improve recall. So the gain of the Oracle is that the, the classifier uh, will not give a false positive, uh, even though this um, these attacks are, 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 sorry, these defenses are in place. However, the defenses are still very effective because they reduce recall to ridiculously low levels, especially for Tamara. Last but not least, uh, we can see the same thing with the, the two configuration of Dynaflow. Um, precision is very, very good. As soon as you hit somewhere around Alexa rank 100 to 1000, always on, at the very top for uh, 10,000, as soon as there is any recall. Um, but yeah. Uh, false positives are reduced significantly, almost close to perfect, uh, especially for higher Alexa ranks. So we just saw that uh, simulated website oracles are very effective at reducing false positives. Let's look at how to concretize website oracles. Where can we get one? What are potential sources? In the paper, we enumerated a large number of sources uh, and evaluated them through some metrics, which unfortunately I don't have a have time to cover now, but I would like to highlight uh, three or four uh, sources that we think are particularly troublesome. To begin with, uh, content delivery networks um, like Cloudflare make perfect website oracles. Uh, on the right-hand side here, we see an approximation for the number of sites, or I should say, yeah, sites on the web, um, which are protected, quote unquote, by Cloudflare, and they are in the tens, uh, tens of percentages here. It's not the Alexa rank, but it's something probably quite similar. Um, should mention that Cloudflare has a, a, a convenient API to their customers uh, with the nanosecond precision in their logs that are retained for days according to the retention policy. And on this topic, it's worthwhile to highlight that uh, website oracles can be used retroactively, right? You don't have to have this capability in real time, in line. Many sources, such as uh, Cloudflare, can be uh, used after, retroactively, to confirm a classification. Another particularly troubling source is real-time bidding. There's a great article by the FF uh, that covers uh, how, in particular, Google uh, is at the center of this. Um, but the gist of it is that when advertisement is shown uh, by Google and other big players online, there is a network of uh, um, advertisement uh, providers that are uh, given information about this ad that is about to be shown, and they're allowed to bid on it to show this uh, ad to you. Uh, and this kind of process takes in the order of a few hundred milliseconds. And having the ability to sit at this table to observe uh, offers of um, of showing advertisement uh, or actually showing the advertisement to, to begin with or buying access to this is also a great website oracle uh, source that I would encourage anyone with more insight into real-time bidding to dig deeper into. Um, last but not least, we have DNS. Uh, and from DNS, observing DNS requests, we can uh, map this precisely to um, websites we know from earlier work. 
So to begin with, uh, DNS servers are used by exit relays in the network to resolve domain names, right? And we know uh, that many exits uh, use DNS servers from Google or Cloudflare. We did a, a measurement uh, for a couple of days on, on our own to get these percentages on the slide. Uh, we also observed that uh, RIPE Atlas nodes uh, are available in the same autonomous systems as about half by bandwidth of all exit relays in the network. So if you cannot uh, query Google or Cloudflare, you could query the DNS servers directly um, used by exits in their uh, autonomous systems if they use the uh, ISP provider ones. Um, I'm going to show an example of this very soon, but uh, I just want to also mention in the context of DNS when we have the big picture here that uh, each exit in Tor also has an internal DNS cache, uh, and you can query this cache with the relay resolve command. Um, and basically, if you get a fast response to this, it means that something was cached. Um, if you get a slow response, it means that the domain name you're querying for was not cached because they have to go and ask their DNS server. And this is also a website oracle source, which we experiment with in the paper. Uh, but moving on to the DNS servers, um, or going back to, I should say, to the DNS servers that are um, used by exits. Um, here, uh, I am from home querying Google's uh, DNS server 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. um, the domain name or subdomain here be dragons of a domain name we, we control, which is configured to have a TTL of 900. Once we query it at home, um, we see that, okay, we get a response back and it has a TTL of 899 seconds. If we then wait um, a couple of seconds, like half a minute or so, and we query it again, then we see that mm, the TTL is much lower than what is set in the record, in the A record. Now it's 847, which implies that somebody visited uh, or requested this DNS uh, domain name um, some time ago. This is also a website Oracle uh, source. And this is how you could use a DNS server of an exit uh, to find out if this domain was ever resolved and therefore a website was visited. Uh, I would also like to mention the fact here that um, domain servers from like Google and Cloudflare have some sort of probabilistic at times shared cache globally. So uh, actually, uh, there are some domain names uh, you can query um, globally if they're cached or not. But please see the paper for some more details there. So to quickly uh, conclude, um, we responsibly disclosed our results uh, to the Tor project and to researchers uh, in, in some of the researchers in the community. Uh, we had some discussions and eventually we landed in that the, the, this work went public uh, during the during December last year. Um, the Tor project posted a, a blog post on how, how they view this, this this kind of new attacks and what they think are good mitigations. I encourage you to read it. Most importantly, I, I would want to say that they encourage research on defenses, which I think is a, is, is a wise thing in general for website fingerprinting. Uh, if we look at our um, question or the, the, the issue with website fingerprinting we looked at earlier around the base rate, and we consider this outcome of a classifier, but this time a website fingerprinting with website Oracle classifier saying that, yeah, Alice, uh, Alice visited Kaudadesi. Well, in this case, for many, for most websites and most website visits in Tor, this means that the classifier is right. Alice did visit Kaudadesi. And we accomplished this by using the base rate of all users of the network against the victim, whose base rate might be very low as well. Uh, we ran an experiment where Alice never visited um, the monitor website in question, and we put the monitor website at Alexa popularity 10,000. Um, we then observed a false positive rate in the order of one per millionth monitored website visited by the victim, I want to emphasize here, which results in a very low false positive rate, uh, and this um, rate will be even lower for less popular websites, which is the majority of websites online, if you recall the number from before. About 40% of website visits in Tor are made to Alexa uh, top 10,000 websites. So our conclusions are that uh, website fingerprinting, website oracle attacks are a real threat, at least in the sense that they address this base rate argument, this base rate challenge um, for website fingerprinting attacks. Um, Oracle's address this at least, at least for most monitored websites and for most website visits done over Tor, as the, the measurements uh, tell us. There are some key limitations in our work, of course. Um, we only do website and not web page fingerprinting, uh, and everything is simulated. We've done some experiments, some network measurements in the paper on, web, on Oracle sources, but in most parts, uh, we are simulating things, of course. Uh, one thing that we are also simulating in the paper uh, are imperfect uh, sources for website oracles. For example, the website oracle could have a false positive rate, right? Uh, but I encourage you to see the paper for this. Um, it does not change the picture much, unfortunately. Um, one potential uh, mitigation uh, for website oracles is to hide when a website visit takes place, but this is extremely costly to do for an extended period of time. So I'm not sure this is a, a worthy uh, defense uh, direction to go into. When you are constructing and evaluating website fingerprinting defenses and attacks, I would urge you to consider the maximum possible recall you can get, because false positive rates uh, will go down with website oracles significantly, so precision is a less useful metric. My personal take is that website oracles are scary, deep learning is even scarier to me, and I personally think we need efficient and effective defenses deployed sooner rather than later. With that, uh, thank you for your time. It's dangerous to go alone. You signal, you store.